What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey, and once in a while I'll throw in a list as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our list. Today we're talking about my top five non-budget whiskeys of 2021. Stick around. So I just reached 2,000 subscribers on this channel right before my one year anniversary, and I'm feeling pretty good about it. I initially was hoping to get there by January 8th, which would mark one year since I posted my first video, but I got there just in time for New Year's 2022. Uh, so before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's liking, commenting, and watching my videos. I love doing YouTube. I'm a total amateur. I'm just out here sharing my passion, and it's amazing to me that my opinions, my thoughts, my videos, whether you agree with them or not, are actually resonating with some of you out there. Um, it's very flattering, and again, I'm very grateful, so thank you. Anyway, this is my fourth Whiskey of the Year related list. Am I milking these end of year wrap up videos? Absolutely. Uh, so far I've done Whiskey of the Year, I've done Runners Up to Whiskey of the Year, I've done Special Releases of the Year, and this is gonna be my last one. This one is my top five non-budget Whiskeys of the Year. My Whiskey of the Year and Runners Up to Whiskey of the Year videos focused on more budget friendly options. My Special Releases video of course focused on market exclusives, limited editions, hard to come by stuff, and this one is going to be largely available, widely distributed whiskeys that you guys should be able to get your hands on. The only difference being that they don't need to be budget options. And just to clarify, that doesn't mean that every whiskey on this list is gonna be like premium or expensive. They could be, but a lot of them might also just be slightly above that entry level price bracket. So there should be something for everyone in here. In fact, most of these whiskeys are not gonna cost you an arm and a leg. After the list, I've got an honorable mention poured into my glass here that I'll be sharing with you. It's a great whiskey, so make sure you stick around for that. And with all that out of the way, let's just jump into our list. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Our number five is not a Scotch whiskey. It's one of a couple world whiskeys on this list. It's also the most expensive option on the list. So I figured I'd just get it out of the way right away. Uh, this one comes from Taiwan, which is where I live. I do feel a special connection to this brand. I'm sure a lot of you are probably expecting a Cavalan here. But there is actually another distillery out of Taiwan called Nanto Distillery and they make excellent stuff. And this one is not a Nanto, it's a Cavalan, it's the Solus Sherry. I don't know why I did that to you. Now I know the Vino here is the cool one, it has been for a long time, ever since, was it Jim Murray or some spirits competition named this one Whiskey of the Year several years back. And don't get me wrong, this is an excellent whiskey. Depending on my mood, I might reach for either this one or the Sherry. But the sherry here really does stand on its own. It's an excellent cast strength banger of a sherry bomb and yeah, really good stuff. Now, you could make the argument that this belongs on the um, special releases whiskey of the year list because this is a single cask offering and no two batches of this are gonna be the same. And having had several bottles of this over the years, I can confirm there is a fair amount of batch variation, but the release itself is consistent. We always have soulless sherries out on the shelves, uh, even though the batches change and Whatever, I, I, I put it here. Because really, almost every Cavalan Solus Sherry I've ever had has been excellent quality. Uh, it's rich, it's thick, it's full, it's absolutely loaded with flavor. It's a sherry bomb, surprisingly refined. Now, yes, it is expensive, but there's no getting around how delicious this is. So, number five, Cavalan Solus Sherry. All right, my number four pick is a bit of a legend. It might be a bit of an obvious pick, but you gotta do it. The problem with this one is availability. It's an extremely popular whiskey. The reason it's on this list is because officially it is widely available, it is a standard release, and it goes for a good price if it's the MSRP, if it's the recommended price. If you can find it for that, definitely pick it up. Secondary market prices, you know, go in there at your own risk. A lot of you might already know what I'm talking about. Springbank 12 cast strength. Very hard to find nowadays, although there are some markets where it's still available, although I'm not sure how long that's going to last. This brand and this release in particular are in very high demand, so if you can find it now at a good price, I strongly recommend you pick it up while you can. And yes, I do realize this is the non-budget list, so we don't need to worry too much about pricing here, but I mean guys, we gotta be reasonable with our money. This is an excellent whiskey, but it's not worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Still though, it's beautiful stuff, uh, if you can find it. This is heavily sherried, it's lightly peated, it's rugged, it's got that dirty Springbank charm that we all love. So yeah, I am a huge fan of this stuff. Despite the shortages in stock and the bloated secondary market prices, this is a great standard release. 
and it's worth every penny if you can get it at the recommended price. Uh, it's a beauty and it's a beast. Number four, Springbank 12 cast strength. So my number three pick is going to be cheaper and easier to find than the previous two. This one has been a fan favorite for years now. We're going to be staying in Campbelltown. We're moving a few blocks over to the Glen Scotia Distillery. This is the Victoriana. Total stunner of a whiskey. This one's cast strength. Again, this is our third whiskey on our list so far, this cast strength. And that's not a coincidence. Higher ABV, more flavor. Uh, but yeah, this one really surprised me this year. You know, I'd previously tried a bottle of it and I didn't love it. I don't know if it was like a dud bottle or if my palate was just broken. But I came back to it again this year and I was totally blown away by it. It's got such a unique and inviting set of flavors and I love the ABV. It's always between like 50 and 55%, which for me is just perfect. You're sure to have a very full and intense set of flavors without the risk of being too far over the top and becoming too harsh or rough. So yeah, great flavors, balance, intensity, it's all there. And beyond that, it's a very viscerally enjoyable whiskey. It's one that I just, I love coming back to, very high reachability. Definitely want to check out if you haven't yet. Number three, Glen Scotia Victoriana. So for my number two pick, we're moving away from the cast friend stuff. We're getting into more age stuff here. It's an 18 year old. And honestly, this and my number one pick are completely interchangeable. I like them about the same. I'll explain why I put this one at number two in a minute. Uh, but this one is the Bonnehaven 18. No joke, this is one of my all time favorite whiskeys ever. Uh, I've tried much older whiskeys, I've tried much more expensive whiskeys, much rarer whiskeys, much more hyped up whiskeys, and still, this is one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. The sherry, the spices, the oak, the Bunnahaven house style, which is one of my favorite house styles by the way, it all comes together into something magical. Um, this one is balanced, it's interesting, it's complex, it's refined, I've got so many adjectives for this one. If you want more details on this one, I'll link my review up there, go check it out. Uh, this is amazing stuff, guys. I know it's not available everywhere, but it should be available in most markets. So good luck if you want to seek this one out. Really good. Um, this one was a game changer for me. So yeah, number two, Bonnehaven 18. All right, so we made it to my number one. This is a whiskey that I reviewed very early on, and I absolutely loved it. It's another 18-year-old, and I like it just as much as the Bonnehaven 18-year-old. Depending on my mood, I might reach for this or the Bunna. Uh, but the reason I picked this one as my number one is that the distillery and the release itself are just slightly less popular than Bunnehaven, so I wanted to shine a spotlight on it. My number one pick is Le Jag 18 year old. I think this is one of the best 18 year olds that money can buy and it's priced very fairly for an 18 year old. But beyond that, this is just such a special whiskey. Le Jag is such an interesting and unique character. It's really something you need to experience for yourself. Now, I don't think this whiskey is going to be for everyone. We do have kind of like a funky fermented note in here, but I love it. I think it works. We've also got big sherry in here, and we've got surprisingly big peat in this. Typically with older whiskeys, the peaty notes tend to be a little bit more toned down, but not here. But really, the hook here is going to be the character. This is such a unique and interesting character. It's so engaging. It's brimming with flavor. I think this is a top tier 18 year old. I think it's a top tier like peat and sherry combo. Just a really cool whiskey through and through. Now you should be aware that this whiskey used to come out in batches and I've got batch three here. Nowadays they've standardized the release so it doesn't come out in batches anymore. So your bottle might not look the same as this one. Um, but yeah, guys, this is really special stuff. I do think this is the best whiskey I had in 2021. Number one, Lejeg 18. So that's it, that's the list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now I do wanna hear from you guys. What were your top non-budget picks from last year? They can be just slightly higher than entry level, they can be mid-range, or they can be full on premium. I just want to know what stood out to you in 2021. Now I know some of you stuck around to find out what my mystery pour in my glass is here. Uh, this is a whiskey that I don't think is going to surprise too many people if you've been watching the channel recently. Uh, I reviewed it not too long ago. It's not a budget whiskey, but it is a very affordable whiskey. It's an Irish, it's a red breast, it's the 12 year old cast strength. What a beauty. This is one of my favorite Irish whiskeys I've had to date. It's gently sherried. It's a single pot still. We have that unmistakable Irish tinny character in here. There's so much to like in this one. So check it out if you haven't. I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's beautiful stuff. And that's it. That's the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe. It's always appreciated. And that's it. See you guys.